This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a thriller film called Red Eye. This tells the story of a young woman who is caught in the middle of an assassination attempt on a prominent US leader by a charismatic middleman and his group. Armed with nothing but her wits and determination, the protagonist will do everything she can to stop the attack from happening. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Let's say you're a superhero and you're faced with the age-old dilemma. A villain has on one hand a school bus filled with kids and, for a good measure, the president, while on the other hand is the love of your life. Who will you save? This is never an easy choice, because it all boils down to selfishness and selflessness. It's never easy to choose the common good above your own interests, but guilt and turmoil are their own world of suffering. Lisa Reisert is no superhero, but the dilemma weighs down on her all the time. After Joe Reisert gets home in Miami, a stranger enters his house and steals his wallet containing his IDs and a picture of his daughter, Lisa. Meanwhile, a group of men transports a wooden cargo box of fish into a different place, with a big crate containing unknown objects. At the Lux Atlantic Hotel, Lisa's friend, Cynthia, struggles to appease two angry guests. She then calls Lisa, their hotel manager, to ask for help, and Lisa quickly resolves the problem over the phone. After that, Cynthia informs her that the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security, Charles Keefe, and his company are arriving earlier than expected, and as usual, Lisa instructs her on what she should do. After attending her grandmother's funeral, Lisa hurries to Dallas Love Field to catch her red-eye flight back to Miami while talking to her father on the phone. Joe obviously misses her and even implies that he wants her to sleep at his house, but Lisa is too busy with work. When they end their call, Lisa learns that her flight is delayed, forcing her to wait with other passengers. Finally, when it's time to reschedule her flight, Lisa engages in a small talk with the old woman in front of her and even gives her a book. Lisa catches a passenger berating an airport staff, so she gets into an argument with him. Then, a handsome stranger, Jackson Ripner, soon backs up Lisa. She thanks Jackson for the kind gesture and when asked, she explains that she did that as a sort of reflex since she works at the Lux Atlantic Hotel. Still, she politely turns down his offer of joining him at the bar. Being a hotel manager or just being in any job that has you dealing with customers will introduce you to the most grating people around, so Lisa is used to dealing with rude people by now. In turn, she's quick to come to the staff's aid since she knows exactly what the woman feels. Meanwhile, her father clearly adores her and wants nothing more than to spend time with his daughter. Though the rest of his house is a mess, he makes sure to keep Lisa's room neat and untouched by his renovations in the hopes that Lisa would one day sleep there again, while she just insists to have it turned into a different room. Once her flight is rescheduled, Lisa sees a young girl preparing to board the plane alone. After a woman spills some iced coffee on her by accident, Lisa goes to the bathroom to clean herself up. Lisa removes her blouse, and she can't help but stare at the scar on her chest. Now clean, Lisa joins Jackson and orders a Bay Breeze. As they talk, Jackson learns that Lisa is scared of flying. When Lisa asks if his nickname is Jack, Jackson says that it isn't, since it'll make him sound like Jack the Ripper. Lisa says that it wasn't nice of his parents, and Jackson offhandedly mentions he told them that before killing them. Later on, the passengers of the delayed flight watch Charles Keefe on television as he makes a speech about subversives. Finally, Lisa and the rest of the passengers board the plane. And there, she is surprised to see that she'll be sitting next to Jackson. When the plane finally takes off, Jackson resets his watch to distract a nervous Lisa by asking her questions about her family. Lisa then asks Jackson what he does, so the man tells her he's in the business of high-profile assassination and overthrowing governments. Things take a sour turn when he mentions that Charles Keefe is staying at the Lux Atlantic Hotel. After calmly asserting that Lisa should keep listening, he takes out her father's wallet, and Lisa finally realizes that she's dealing with a dangerous man. Lisa tries to alert a flight attendant about her situation, but Jackson warns her that he'll have his associate kill Joe if she does. After Jackson all but charmed and disarmed her, Lisa found herself unable to do anything but submit to his demands when her father's life was threatened. So many lives are at stake here, from the passengers to Charles Keefe's and his family, but Lisa is understandably putting her father first. However, there's no guarantee that Jackson won't kill Joe even if she does everything he says. When one of the flight attendants checks to see what Lisa needs, she sees her crying, and Jackson tells her that Lisa's just had a rough day since she's bereaved. While the attendant goes to fetch some tissues and water, Jackson assures Lisa that her father will remain safe as long as she plays along with his plan. Jackson instructs her to call her hotel and have Keith moved from 3825 to suit 4080. Lisa tells Jackson she doesn't have the authority to do that, but Jackson doesn't believe her and hands her the in-flight phone. Realizing that Keith will be killed, Lisa tries to stall, but Jackson runs out of patience and tells her to worry about her father instead. Lisa demands to speak to her father first before she calls the hotel, so Jackson lets her. However, he doesn't let them talk for too long, and Jackson grabs the in-flight phone from Lisa. He then tells her to call the hotel, but a passenger asks Jackson for help with her luggage before Lisa could. 
With Lisa's bag in hand, Jackson goes. And the old lady from earlier thanks Lisa for her book and asks for her address so she can return the favor. Grabbing the opportunity, Lisa writes something in the woman's book and quickly returns it to her. When Jackson comes back, he senses what Lisa has done and comments that the woman's going to read that. Just as Lisa asks him what he means, he suddenly headbutts her, knocking her out cold. Jackson maintains his cool despite his bleeding head. A lot of things must be going through Lisa's mind, mainly because there's only so much she can do inside an airplane. Her father's life is at stake, and at the same time, an important man and his family will die if she gives Jackson her full cooperation. At this point, it seems like no matter what Lisa does, she'll have blood in her hands. Lisa regains consciousness half an hour later, and before she calls the hotel, she makes Jackson promise to make the hitman outside her father's house leave. When Lisa finally talks to Cynthia, her friend notices that she sounds upset, but Lisa assures her she's fine. Lisa is about to order Keith's room transfer, but the line suddenly dies due to a service disruption. Instead of telling Jackson, Lisa pretends to still be talking to Cynthia, but Jackson realizes what she's doing when he sees another passenger having a problem with his in-flight phone. Jackson confirms that the phones are down with a flight attendant, so he threatens Lisa that she'll bury her father with a closed casket if the lines don't go back up. Back in Miami, Joe finds a parcel outside his door and notices a car parked across the street, where the driver quietly watches him. Back on the plane, Lisa tells Jackson that Keith is a decent man, but he just ignores her. He then makes a remark that suggests they've been watching her for quite some time already, scaring her. Uncomfortable, Lisa tells Jackson she needs to go to the restroom. And before she enters the stall, the girl that Lisa had seen before boarding the plane falls in line behind her. Once she's inside the restroom, Lisa breaks down while the girl, Rebecca, notices how closely Jackson is watching them. Lisa is determined to keep her father alive, but she wants to save Keith and his family too. She tries in her own little way to make sure that no one will get hurt, even if that means risking her safety. Unfortunately, Jackson is as sharp as his jaw, and he makes it clear that the only way things will go well for Lisa is if she does as she's told. When the lines go back up, Jackson follows Lisa to the restroom, where she writes a bomb warning on the mirror using the soap. As soon as he sees the message, Jackson forces his way inside and slams Lisa around the small stall while choking her. Outside, Rebecca informs a flight attendant that Lisa and Jackson are both inside the stall. Lisa begs Jackson to stop the hitman, but Jackson is done with her stunts and tells her to do her father a favor by being cooperative. He then sees Lisa's scar, but Lisa won't tell him how she got it. Annoyed, Jackson keeps slamming Lisa around, telling her that he thinks she's not a very honest person since he's been following her around for eight weeks and she never ordered anything but sea breeze. This is a reference to their earlier conversation in the bar, where Jackson asked her if she was a sea breeze kind of woman, but Lisa ordered a bay breeze instead. Jackson releases her, and while he erases the message on the mirror, Lisa finally tells him that she'll do everything he asks. Once they come out, a flight attendant scolds them for fooling around, much to Jackson's indifference. On their way to their seats, Jackson asks the old woman what she's looking for, and she says her book is missing. Once seated, Jackson tells Lisa that they'll make the call after the flight attendants make their rounds. More and more are the cracks in Jackson's composure beginning to show, and though he continuously attempts to cover them, he keeps growing more violent with Lisa. As for Lisa, she only proves how guarded she was and continues to be around him, but being guarded and wary alone won't save anyone especially when the flight attendants are missing all the signs that something's amiss. Meanwhile, Keith's entourage prepares for their arrival at the Lux Atlantic Hotel. Back on the plane, Jackson dials the hotel's number for Lisa and makes her talk to Cynthia. Lisa finally tells her friend to move Keith and his family to Suite 4080. Then, she asks Jackson to call off the hitman. However, Jackson says that he'll only do that once they land and he gets a confirmation that the Keiths have already been handled, making Lisa realize that they plan to assassinate the whole Keith family. At the hotel, Keith's security isn't happy to learn that they're being transferred to a different room, but Keith lets it slide once he finds out that their transfer has been authorized by Lisa. The security team sweeps their new room thoroughly and finds nothing, but they get alarmed upon seeing a yacht at the bay. As Lisa's plane prepared to land, she pretends to be sick and bends down to touch the ball pen she's stolen from one of the passengers. Jackson then tells Lisa that he'll follow her into the terminal before they go to a coffee shop, where they'll wait for the call that signals that the Keiths have been taken out. Only then will he call off the hitman. At this point, Lisa just stays quiet and hold on to the ball pen. Despite the sudden change and inconvenience of the transfer, Keith goes along with it, which only shows how much he trusts Lisa. And Lisa appears to have one more trick up her sleeve. Though the odds are clearly stacked against her favor, she's not just dealing with a single man after all. Lisa's up against a highly organized group that plans on overthrowing their government. And with all things considered, it would take a miracle for her to even make it out of this alive. The Coast Guard clears the yacht at the bay of any suspicions and leaves its passengers to their business. Back at the airport, Lisa finally shares with Jackson how she got her scar. Two years ago, a man attacked her, and from then on, she promised herself that it will never happen again. With that, 
she suddenly stabs Jackson in the throat with a ball pen, damaging his vocal cords. She hurriedly takes his phone and leaves her seat at the passenger's getup, allowing her to get away from Jackson. As soon as the door opens, Lisa exits the plane. Inside, a flight attendant alerts the airport security. The man with whom Jackson and Lisa had an argument earlier turns out to be a doctor and tries to tend to Jackson, but Jackson just pulls the pen from his neck. He is then slowed down by Rebecca, who trips him. Still, he continues to move and steals a scarf from a stewardess to wrap around his neck. Meanwhile, Lisa fails to get a signal from Jackson's phone and scrambles to avoid the guards and Jackson himself. She eventually escapes him when she hops on a train. While back at the bay, the men in the yacht haul their crate into their boat, which contains their weapons. Lisa steals a van and calls Cynthia, telling her to pull the fire alarm and alert the Keefs that they're a target. Since the US Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security is involved in the situation, the Coast Guard should have been thorough with their search. The idea of hiding something in the water is not hard to think of, which is a huge mistake on their part. On the other hand, Lisa continues to prove both her resourcefulness and fortitude even though she's already failed to stop Jackson's plan several times. She's unyielding and uncompromising, and even if death were to stare at her in the eyes, it would be anything but certain. Cynthia successfully alerts Keith's security team, and everyone in the room manages to leave before a javelin missile crashes through. The men in the yacht then make their escape. While Lisa finally reaches her father's place, Lisa then sees the hitman standing just outside her father's door. And though he starts to shoot at her, she manages to run him over. Joe sees Lisa's mess, and he informs her that the cops are already on their way. Worried, Joe leaves to fetch the first aid kit, while Lisa calls Cynthia to see if she's okay. When Lisa looks for her father, she is frightened to see that Jackson is there. To her horror, he informs her that he's just incapacitated Joe. Lisa finds her unconscious father in the kitchen, and there, she bravely tells Jackson that he's failed. After that, the two play a game of cat and mouse in the house, with Lisa kicking and headbutting Jackson, causing him to fall down the stairs. Enraged, Jackson takes the dead hitman's knife and pursues Lisa as she escapes through a window. Lisa makes her way back to the house and throws a vase at Jackson, before hiding in her bedroom, which Jackson eventually enters. Lisa fights Jack with a stout cane and disarms him, but Jack soon overpowers and throws her down the stairs. As she tries to flee, Lisa sees and grabs the hitman's gun and shoots Jackson when he tries to attack her. Unfortunately, he still manages to kick the gun out of her hand even though he's already injured. Luckily, Joe regains consciousness and picks up the gun before putting a bullet in Jackson's chest. It just goes to show how strong and selfless Lisa is. When given the choice between the greater good and her own beloved father, she pulled all the stops to make sure that out of everyone involved, Jackson will be the one to fall. It was never a matter of what to pick for her, but what she can do to keep everyone safe and to never break her promise to herself. Later on, Lisa returns to the hotel and reunites with Cynthia, who is relieved to see her. Keith then thanks the ladies for saving his and his family's lives. As Lisa and Cynthia talk, they are confronted by the rude couple from the day before. They keep complaining to Lisa, even asking her to fire Cynthia, but Lisa just tells them off. Life kicks you down and it goes on. On and on life goes, and over and over you'll have to live it. After such a high-octane experience with Jackson and his organization, Lisa returns to dealing with her day-to-day -day affairs with consummate professionalism. This is like the time when she got attacked, and she had to live on as normal, but with a steelier resolve. And now that she's stood outside the gates of death, Lisa is far fiercer than she was, all without ever letting go of the nice person that she is. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.